Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. for you. What was that? See, he who has wisdom wonders not of the beast, for nothing in hell lives without man's consent. No, no. Ah. Whoa to you that gives the beast form. To contemplate evil is to ask evil home. Contemplate.
Lady, uh, 
Can I help you with your things? Uh, no, thanks, I think. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk uh, in town about this place. Kind of creepy talk. A lot of weirdos, they, uh, well, they come and go. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't... A couple of people were murdered here back in 55. I was a kid then, but uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. My mother, she would just say, Stuart, you steer clear from that place. You understand? It's a bad place. In fact, uh, just a month ago, I, I picked a fella up from here. Uh, well, he told me a hell of a lot of bizarre stories. Ah, oh. oh. Hey, thanks. Uh, are you an artist? Yes. Yes, oh. he is. Oh, I'm a cartoonist. Ah, I see. Uh, well, listen, you just watch out for yourself in here, lady. This place attracts all kinds of trouble. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure you don't want any help with that, huh? I, I got it. Okay. Boy, Rods will chew your ear off. Did I frighten you? Yes, you scared me half to death. Uh, you must be Mrs. Briggs. That's right. Hi, I'm Whitney Taylor. We met two years ago at the Rhode Island School of Design. Mm -hmm. You lectured on classicism and the decline of pop art in America. Oh, I remember. You were the heckler in the first row. Well, actually, I was just offering you a, a different point of view. So to speak. Well, shall we get on with it? I'm sorry. The interview. I love to be frightened. As a child, I collected every issue of Cellar Dweller, no matter how hard they were to track down. I'm not surprised. Well, my parents disapproved, so I had to hide the comic books under my bed, and I'd read them only late at night by flashlight. I'd read about towns besieged by vampires and men transformed into hideous beasts by the waxing of the full moon. How inspiring. Exactly. Well, that's how I got into drawing. So now you've taken it upon yourself to follow in the footsteps of your idol, hmm? Colin Childress. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the first few sketches are just copies of Childress's work. I was just really learning how to draw, and the rest, of course, are my own. Mm. Mrs. Briggs, I want to create a whole new comic book in the tradition of Cellar Dweller. And, well, what better place to be inspired than here in the house that Colin Chambers lived and worked in. Mm. And went crazy in and killed himself in. <sighs> Let's not forget that. Miss Taylor, all of this is very spine-tingling. But what does it have to do with art? I'm sorry. Let me be frank. This facilities admissions committee has advised me to find a place for you. I suspect, however, that in accepting you, my superiors are, well, are acting on some perverse sense of nostalgia. Uh, Colin Childress was a cartoonist. So are you. Well, that's the only reason you're here. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be. No need to mince words, Mrs. Briggs. Just tell me exactly how you feel. Oh, please don't misunderstand. <laughs> There's nothing personal in all this. It's just that my only concern is for the colony. 
See, we have no telephones, no television, no outside ties to the world. Oh, it's a unique situation. What's all this? Our most promising resident does some highly innovative work with video. Uh, this is her Video Verite project. It's an effort to reflect our world as precisely as possible. You could learn something from her. Oh, by the way, that is where your idol concocted his last and most notorious work, the murder of an innocent young woman, a promising musician with her entire career ahead of her. Oh, don't even think about going down there. That door is off limits. As you can see, this is our kitchen. We all take turns uh, preparing the meals. This is Whitney Taylor, our newest resident. Lisa is a performance artist. And Philip paints abstracts. I think that you would discourage this kind of work, Mrs. Briggs. Oh, not all contemporary art is uh, populist tripe, Miss Taylor. <laughs> Come along. <clears throat> It's a cow in there. That's, that's very nice. It's angst. Sorry. Philip Lemley. Whitney Taylor. Enchanted. Likewise. Aren't you a little old for comics, Whitney? Aren't you a little young to be a critic, Philip? You're right. I'm sorry. So, I guess we have something in common, huh? Really, what's that? A great big thorn in our side. Mrs. Briggs. She doesn't think much of me, either. Why not? Because I'm brilliant. But alas, my lady, I am just a mere child in a pawn of the cruel trappings of our Mrs. Briggs. Come on. Where? To my opening. Your opening? Yes. Every evening, a group of us gather to critique each other's work. It's the one time we're supposed to share what we're doing. And I'm sure you'll find the comments most enlightening. The excess of flamboyance of the coloration of your painting detracts from the power of the narrative and the true glory of the painting. 
Can you repeat that in English? It's elegant, powerful, and deceptively simple. It has this amazing otherness. <laughs> All right, give me the panties and the broad gets it. I'm flattered you really think you're that valuable. What on earth are you doing? Cannon, lady! I hand them over. I really mean business. Jesus, Philip, give him the paintings! No. No, he's bluffing. Don't count on it, lady. You're not going to shoot her. You want to take that chance? That... That gun you're so proud of is a 357 Magnum. <laughs> Give the lady a cigar. So what? So? The cylinder holds six bullets. You just fired one. The rest of the cells are empty. That gun isn't even loaded. You are very observant. Very. I want to thank you all very much. I can continue with my scene now. You've been very, very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Norman, you fool! You destroyed a So what is that? That's Norman Michelsky, ex-private eye in tomorrow's Raymond Chandler. <laughs> Sometimes he gets blocked and he says it helps to act things out, so we humor him. I just treat it as an exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whitney Taylor, it's been a long time. <laughs> Not nearly long enough, Amanda. Still drawing the funnies. Some people never outgrow certain things. Some things get better with age, Amanda. I've stuck with the drawing. <laughs> of course you have. I always knew you would. You had such a knack for kitsch. I see you've changed directions again. When our paths first crossed, you're, what, the reigning queen of the sculpture world? And then it was action drawing. And, oh, we can't forget your stint as an actress, can we? You are a real Renaissance woman, Amanda. Well, careers are organic, Whitney. What the hell is she doing here? The board of directors fell in love with her. We'll have to do something about that, won't we? You bet. great way to try and cleanse out all the tension in my body. I guess the others are just used to it. They'll have to be a little bit more quiet for you. <laughs> so, what do you think of our cozy college? Well, the atmosphere is nice, but uh, it's a bit stuffy for my taste. You mean Amanda? Mm -hmm. I take it you two are old friends. Hardly. I think that if I had ever had an enemy in this, this whole world, it would be Amanda. We knew each other in art school, and uh, she made every minute of my first year miserable. What do you mean? Well, Amanda was the hot thing on campus when I first entered the school. Not that 
She was very talented. She was just great at dazzling people with all the bullshit. <laughs> Even though I was uh, only a first-year student, my work ended up in the same gallery show as Amanda's, and I guess, I guess you could say I garnered a bit more attention than she did. Amanda always wanted everything, even if it wasn't hers. And uh, she had a way of taking things that didn't belong to her and getting things that she really did not deserve. <laughs> Mrs. Briggs is sure warmed up to her. Yeah, well, like they say, birds of a feather. <laughs> anyway, we're not all that bad. You had a chance to talk to Philip yet? <laughs> yeah, he's a sweet kid. Don't worry about Mrs. Briggs. Don't worry about Amanda. Just keep busy, and and your work will speak for itself. Thank you, Miss. What is that? That's the ghost of Colin Childress. Seriously, that's why the cellar door is off limits, is because he haunts the scene of his gruesome crimes. <laughs> Listen, I'm B. I want to go to bed. Okay. Good night, kiddo. Good night. <laughs> Frightened. What are you doing down here? Spying on you. Oh, isn't it uh, past your bedtime? <laughs> what are you doing down here? What the hell is this? Philip, this is the place where Colin Childress lived and worked. Now, according to the police, 30 years ago, he butchered a woman with an axe and then set himself on fire. And this guy's your idol? Well, Philip, I don't believe he did that. <laughs> Then what happened, Sherlock? Well, they were murdered. How do you know that? It's the only logical explanation. Hmm? That, that must be the uh, pipes, right? It's the ghost of Colin Childress. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's, let's just get out of oh, here, OK? Really? No, the clown's place is great. I think I just found the ghost of Colin Childress. What? Look at this. What are you doing? Don't open it. 
for nothing in hell lives without man's consent. Or one to you would give the beast form. To contemplate evil is to ask evil harm. I'm out of here. That's it. I don't see anyone can spend 10 minutes down here, let alone work down here. It's crazy. No, absolutely not. Why not? Because I said so. Oh, that's not good enough. You sneak around here in the middle of the night and invade an off-limits area. <laughs> you expect me to grant you favors? My dear, what you lack in talent, you make up for in nerve. Mrs. Briggs, be reasonable. Nobody is using the cellar right now. It's just collecting dust. Look, we can both benefit if I work down there. The room I'm using now will be empty. Then you can bring in someone else, and you won't have to worry about my displacing a real artist. All right, Whitney, you win. But if you don't like it once you're down there, you can only blame yourself. I won't change my mind. Whitney? Amanda. I have a little video project like to commission for you. I've never done a restoration before. What do you think? It's great. Yeah? It's great, yeah. It's terrific. So listen to this. It's part werewolf and vampire, demon and ghost. It will tear your throat open, then drink your blood and feast on your still warm brains. That's sick. It's terrifying, but it's going to make a terrific comic book. In fact, I'm certain this is what Childress was working on when he died. The roughs were probably destroying the fire. Mm. Thank God for small favors, huh? Now, the inspiration of this ancient curse, Whitney Taylor is going to create the ultimate monster. Good luck. I'm off to create the ultimate finger painting.
hell are you doing down here? <laughs> I um, just wanted to see what you were up to. You've been so secretive about it. Bullshit. Since when have you been... an explicit invitation. Ah, oh, it's your work. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're up to, Amanda, but if I, if I ever catch you down here again, I will hang you up by your eyelids and wrench out your fingernails one by one. You got it? Yeah, I do. I'm really scared. Amanda, haven't you caused me enough trouble for one lifetime? I really don't know what you mean. You know exactly what I mean. I still can't seem to forget about a certain fellowship that was supposed to be mine. Well, the committee seemed to have thought otherwise. Yeah, after a little monetary persuasion from you. Whitney, you've always been such a sore loser. Get out of here before I really lose my temper. Bye. Taylor is a plagiarist, as this videotape so clearly demonstrates. She cloistered herself in the cellar and stole another artist's work. Now, I am certain that the Throckmorton Institute for the Arts has no place for an untalented act like Miss Taylor. It is with true. Oh! <laughs> 
Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Morning. Come on. Time to go to school. <laughs> you know, you really disappoint me. I've always heard grown women sleep in the nude. <laughs> At least that's the way it is in my dreams. What time is it? If we hurry, we can still make breakfast. <clears throat> what do you think? Hmm. I think I'd hate to get on your bad side. Well, so this pet care products company wants to know the formula of their nearest competitor's flea collar. So they hire me to dig out some info. I find out that the competitor's top of the line model, the Peppy Puppy Deluxe, is gonna put the guy out of business. I gotta get my hands on the formula. Mm -hmm. But the competitor, he's shrewd. He puts the formula in code. No good to my man. To make a long story short, I end up tailing a German shepherd halfway across the country. Has <laughs> <laughs> anyone here seen Amanda? Well, not since last night. Maybe she went out. Get real. We're hundreds of miles from the nearest shopping mall. Where's she gonna go? She's been missing all morning, and I'm really worried. I'm not. In fact, I don't care if I ever see her again. Hey, kid, did you ever hear Amanda and Whitney arguing? Who hasn't? They're at each other's throats. Whitney really hates that bitch, doesn't she? <laughs> I'll say. You should see this cartoon she drew over last night. What about it? No, she drew Amanda. A what? Sorry, I can't tell you. Why not? Because it's Whitney's work, and if she wants you to see it, she'll show it to you herself. Huh. I got a funny feeling we're not gonna be graced by Amanda's presence much longer. between the two girls was thick enough to cut with a knife. Is Whitney Taylor capable of murder?
Dead. Dead. It's sad. It's a death knell, a lament to the brevity of life. It was interesting. It was very moving, Lisa. <laughs> you must have put a lot of work into that, because it was very hard on me. I've got you now, Whitney. I've got you now. Taylor is a plagiarist, as this videotape so clearly demonstrates. She cloistered herself in the cellar and stole another artist's work. Son of a bitch. She killed her for revenge. The motive was revenge. It is...
Amanda. Who else? Who else? Tell me. I don't know. I don't know. I swear to God. I swear to God I'm going to kill her. Amanda stole my work from the cellar, but how did she get a hold of my portfolio? I'm sure I don't know. Bullshit. You gave it to her. Now, both of you had it in for me from the moment I got here. Now, what the hell is going on and where is she? I assure you, I don't know where Amanda is. Well, maybe she's playing a joke on you. Come in. Another interesting development. Michelski's nowhere in the house. Are you sure? Yeah, unless he's suddenly developed a passion for hide and seek. Well, you see, Norman is probably working on an elaborate scenario and he's stuck on one of his scenes and he and Amanda are testing it out. Maybe. But if I find out that you're trying to hurt me, I'm going straight to the board of directors. And that, Mrs. Briggs, is a promise. You know, usually when I'm angry, I can channel it into my work. <laughs> so I've noticed. But I am so upset, I, I feel like I'm paralyzed. Well, let's bag the work and get out of here. Go for a walk or something. Oh, I can't do that, Philip. Come on, you're not getting anything done here anyway. I'll tell you my life story. Really? Uh-huh. This I've got to hear. Life story, huh? Absolutely. Is it interesting? It started back in the early 1930s. <laughs> Have you seen Norman or Amanda? For the last time, no. Well, I am worried about oh, Who are you kidding? Whitney told me that Amanda stole her things. It's a sense the two of you are in cahoots plotting something against Whitney. That's absurd. Oh, is it? You just didn't expect Whitney to find out. My only concern is for the reputation of this colony. Mrs. Briggs, you just might have something to be concerned about now. No, the real challenge for me is to come up with interesting ways to kill people. You're an authority now, are you right? Yeah, lots of field work. Plus, I have some great research material. I see what you mean by interesting. Huh? You have really outdone yourself this time. What are you talking about? Your latest masterpiece. It's very intense. I didn't draw this. Oh, come on, don't be embarrassed, with. It's your way of dealing with aggression, right? At least it's constructive. It's okay. I'm serious, Philip. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Wait, it's really not like you to be modest. Shh, I'm telling you, Philip, I did not draw that. Then who did? Childress's ghost? Shh, listen. He who has wisdom wonders not of the beast, for nothing in hell lives without man's consent. But woe unto you who would give the beast form. To contemplate evil is to ask evil home. Hello? Somebody there? Come on now, what are you talking about? Philip, the curse is real. What curse? What are you saying? It threatens anybody who dares to give the beast form, don't you see? I drew it. I gave it life, and now 
and now Amanda is gone, and Norman is gone. Wait, and I don't wait know. a minute. Are you trying to say to me that a monster you drew just stepped off a page and devoured Amanda and Norman? That's right. Oh, God, Philip, that's what, that's what killed Colin Childress 30 years ago. He probably... Out of here. It's over for us. I know. It's only one chance. It's only one chance. We have to get rid of it. Diarrhea. Wait, what are we gonna do? We are gonna destroy its physical Oh, down, Whitney, you're not making any sense. Oh. Look, I have searched high and low for all of them. Uh, they'll be back. Haven't you been listening to me? I certainly have. Comic books and monsters and... Oh, that's a nasty cut. I have some disinfectant here somewhere. I'll look for it. I, uh, I changed my mind about those comic books. I've been going through a lot of changes lately.
Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog.